Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Fontana. I'm an IRS enrolled agent with EA Tax Resolutions. And if you just bought a rental property, you're gonna need to check out this video to find out the tax treatments of the various closing costs found on your closing statement. All right, now before we go line by line through the closing statement, I gotta discuss the three various taxing categories that these closing costs may fall under. Now those three are the basis adjustment, a rental expense or capitalized costs that result in an amortization expense. Now I know this sounds like a lot of tax jargon and that's why I'm gonna go through these one by one for you guys. Okay, the first category we have here for tax treatment on the closing statement is the basis adjustment. Now we need to know what the basis adjustments are because when we go to sell the home, this is gonna come into the calculation of figuring the capital gain or losses that you may have to pay tax on when you sell. So first of all, what is the basis? The basis is your purchase price, plus or minus these basis adjustments that we're gonna find on the closing statement, plus the improvements that you may make to the home, minus any depreciation expense you've taken throughout the years, is gonna be what we call the adjusted basis. Now the adjusted basis is gonna go into that capital gain or loss calculation, which we have over here. Now the calculation is Pretty straightforward. It's the selling price that you sell the home minus any selling expenses, which you're gonna find on the closing statement when you sell the home, minus your adjusted basis, which we have from over here, is gonna give your capital gain or loss. And you may have to pay tax on that capital gain or loss. So obviously, keeping track of this basis adjustments is really gonna help you when it comes time to sell this rental property to make sure you're not gonna to pay too much in tax. Okay, the second category for tax treatment on the closing statement is rental expense. Now these are pretty straightforward and they're gonna benefit you in the current year. So you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you get these down. Now for the most part, we're gonna have to reconcile the rental expenses found on the closing statement with the IRS form 1098, which is gonna be issued at the end of the year. Now, again, this is gonna be a current year tax deduction and it's gonna go on the Schedule E of your current year's tax return. And the way the Schedule E works is pretty straightforward. It's just your rental income minus your various rental expenses, some of which are found on the closing statement. And that's gonna get your rental profit or loss, which you may or may not have to pay tax on. So these are very key you know, to make sure that we get down so we don't have to pay as much tax in the current year. Okay, so the third and final category for tax treatment of the closing costs are capitalized costs. Now these are normally costs that are associated with your mortgage and what we get to do with these is what we call amortize them over the life of the loan or the mortgage. So let's say at the end of the closing statement we figure that we have a hundred dollars of capitalized costs and we have a 30-year mortgage that we've entered into. What we're going to do is get that hundred dollars divided by the 30 years of the mortgage, and you're gonna get $3.33 a year. This is gonna be what we call an amortization expense, and this amortization expense is gonna go on your Schedule E that we just saw earlier as a rental expense. So obviously this is key that we get this accurately, so we make sure we're paying the correct amount in tax each year for the life of the loan. All right, now that we know the three various categories of tax treatment found on the closing statement, I'm gonna go line by line with you through a closing statement and let you know which line falls under which category. Okay, so this is one of the more common closing statements used when purchasing a rental property. It's called the Settlement Statement HUD1. This template is issued by the US Department of Housing and Urban Development, as we can see their little logo up here. And as you can also see, I've highlighted the three categories for tax treatment on the top up here. So whenever you see a line item that has been highlighted with the respective color here, you can treat that cost accordingly. All right, so to jump right in, we're gonna go to line 101, which is the contract sales price here. This is the price you purchased the home for, um, and it is the start of your basis. Line 102 is personal property, like any furniture in the home when you purchased it, again, will be added to your basis. Line 103, we are going to skip over for now as this is a combination of few line items found on the second page. Okay, so line 106 through 108 right here look very similar to line 210 through 212 down here. However, the section 100 up top shows items paid for seller in advance, whereas 
Section 200 shows items unpaid by seller. I have highlight, highlighted them two different colors because it depends on which section is greater to determine how to treat the amounts. You'll need to take the difference between the two sections respectively, so lines 106 minus line 210 down here, and so on. So if section 100 up top here is greater than section 200, you'll need to take an as an expense, the difference as an expense. Whereas if section 200 is greater than 100 up here, you'll need to take that difference and add it to your basis. So on a side note here, if the assessments amount is for local improvement district, this will need to be capitalized and amortized over the life of the loan. All right, to move on here, Line 206 is lender cure. Uh, this is a actually a reduction to your basis. And line 214, transfer taxes credit. Again, a reduction to your basis. On to page two. Again, at the top, you're gonna see here a little reminder of what colors represents which taxing categories. Okay, so if you agree to pay the seller's portion of the sales commission, you can add that to your basis. It's gonna be found over here. All right, so section 800. Most of this section 800 is capitalized and amortized over the life of the loan because as you can see, the name of the section is items in connection with the loan. So that's a whole bunch of these items, right? The origination charge, um, the points for specific interest rate chosen, your adjusted origination, uh, origination charges, um, appraisal fee, we'll get into that. Um, Credit report, definitely, tax service, flood certification, assumption fee, pre-close credit report, lender's inspection fee, insurance application fee. Um, all right, so back to the appraisal, appraisal fee. This is the only exception here in section 800, and if the appraisal fee is required, you will need to capitalize and amortize that over the life alone, whereas if the appraisal is not required, the appraisal fee will increase your basis. So on to section 900. All right, so line 901 are the interest you are charged for the mortgage that will be used as a rental expense. You will need to reconcile this amount with the amounts that are reported on the IRS form 1098 that you're gonna receive at the end of the year, just to make sure that you uh, that everything here is included in that form 1098 so you get all the deductions possible line 902 903 mortgage insurance premium and homeowners insurance premium these are also to be capitalized and amortized over the period of the pay that the payment covers so normally these are like one year terms so it would be an expense in the year because it's only a one year term. But if it's for more than one year, you're gonna to have to capitalize and amortize it over the life of those uh, that the payment covers. Okay, so section 1000, pretty straightforward here. These amount are deposited into your escrow account with the lender and are deductible when they are dispersed from your escrow by the lender. These amounts paid um, from escrow should be reported on your form 1098 at the end of the year. So again, we're gonna need to reconcile this with the 1098, but this is all a rental expense that you will be able to take once they are dispersed. So as for the rest of this second page here, section 1100, 1200, and 1300, Basically, all of this section here are going to be added to the costs of the property and then depreciated over uh, the life of the rental property. So that, you know, that's basically all these charges here. And you can go ahead and read those one by one. I won't go do that. It's going to take a little time there, but you can go ahead and check that out. All right, well, I hope this gives you a good idea for the tax impact of the items on the closing statement for a rental property purchase. Keep in mind that the tax treatment of closing costs on the primary home are considerably different than the rental property that we just discussed. Another great resource for rental property owners for tax is this IRS publication 527, oops, right here. I do this so you can take a look at it. There it is. Um, it not only has the closing cost treatment 
tax treatment that we just discussed, but it also has calculations for depreciation, how to report income expenses, and some other special uh, situations in there. It's, it's actually really a great resource, and, and I highly recommend that you take a look at this if, if you just bought a rental property and you need to know what other tax deductions you can get. Um, well, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you could, please do me a huge favor and like or share this video and subscribe to my channel for all things tax. Thanks again.